Hi everybody! Welcome on in! Skullsbane here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've been talking about doing a wardrobe based on uh, late Victorian and Edwardian for a while, and this is a capsule wardrobe that would be found in three years of shopping for somebody who lives in the city. I'm going to be splitting it up into four quarters so that I'll be able to work on a little bit at a time. Hopefully by the end of the year I'll be able to have a full wardrobe at the end of 2025. First thing I need to do is move my book out of the way. Now this is something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and it is time that I get started. And I'm just going to start breaking things up into quarters. I apologize for the writing and the planner being blurry. I will list in the notes below everything that is in this list that I have made and how it has been split up for those who are interested. Now some of these you'll see um, that I'm putting like two or three things per quarter and that's because you need multiples of things like union suits or corset covers or petticoats, uh, multiple shirts, multiple skirts, things like that. What I'm starting off with here is splitting out the union suits, which is the underwear. So it's a combination uh, chemise and open drawers, open crotch drawers, because I will be wearing a corset with all of this and pulling underwear up with a corset on. A full length corset It's not a fun experience. <laughs> So it's actually more comfortable and more convenient to use the open crotch drawers. And they're actually really comfortable if they're sized correctly. And then the chemises, which instead of chemises, I will be making corset covers. Multiple different types of petticoats. Cotton petticoats, silk petticoats, and sateen petticoats. They each have different uses and do better with different fabrics over the top. Um, the silk tends to do best with either silk or wool skirts, or that at least that's what I found. And the sateen does amazing with the wool as well. The cotton petticoats would be more for uh, the linen or the everyday cotton dresses that will be made as well. Each one of these, they're actually fairly simple to put together. And I will do a flip through at the end of the book that you saw in the beginning of this, the Sewing and Garment Drafting. And that's the book that I will be using the patterns out of because they're easy to draft for me. I've had practice. <laughs> All right, nightgowns. There should be nine nightgowns by the end of it since this is being split into quarters and I'm trying to split things equally. I'm going to put some things off to the side, like the cotton petticoats and the nightgowns. Or the extra nightgown, I should say. I already have three sets of stockings, so I don't need to worry about that. 
I have one corset, so I will need two more over the course, but that one corset is getting a little bit old. I've had it for about three years, um, so I may need to remake that. And then going up to the top of the list, all of the suits and the coats and the waistcoats, it's all of the outerwear. It's all of the things that people will see on a daily basis. And because this is all getting put together and listed in the same fashion, I'm going to speed this up a little bit until I get to the point of the suits. thinking here. I'm having a hard time with it and trying to figure out exactly what I need to do. There's two cotton petticoats and a nightgown listed up there. That's what I put the arrows on. Alright, and there is the three suits, three coats, Six waistcoats. I'm going to split that up. So there will be three tailored silk waistcoats for everyday use and three dressy waistcoats. Now saying that the silk waistcoats are for everyday use, this is keeping in mind that silk was used on a daily basis and there are many different grades of silk and types of silk that are being made and being used. This would be the rougher, um, not very fine silk, but I do have enough in stash that I can make. I have a bunch of watered silk that I picked up at Goodwill um, that I can make those out of fairly easily. Just making sure to note down that both of those waistcoats that still need to be listed are the dressy variety. is going. Uh, this is not the easiest thing for me to do. Okay. And this is where I get into the suits. Each suit has a top and a skirt, so that's two different pieces. So, with thinking, 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 okay. Two wool skirts. matching and I have a full suit at the end of it. Okay. So that makes two suits that need to be left or need to be added. We've got all three skirts on there. Now there are two the two silk shirts because each silk shirt is going to take about the same amount of work as a suit top. Huh? 
That means for quarter three, this is where I think you had to happen again. I just went ahead I believe this is, yeah, this is where I added the third nightgown because I can make a fancier one and it's going to take a little bit more effort but that also means that's one more thing alright, so we've got two cotton pickets. myself off by adding the nightgown into quarter three and I was sitting there counting I'm like wait a minute there's not enough there's not enough lines filled out there was there was my brain just stopped for a minute <laughs> and this is where I added the other suit skirts to make that even because a petticoat and a skirt honestly takes about the, the same amount of work, depending on what you do with each one of them. And then we went to do the, cert, the suits at the same time. There was a thought process. I was thinking, can you can you smell the dust burning? <laughs> Two tops should go with suit bottoms and then the two waistcoats. So I add the second top there and the suit top to go with the bottom there and then the two dressy waistcoats will go in quarter one, quarter two. Three dresses are the most important. I don't have the things that I need for either the corsets or the coats. Which is why I'm marking with question marks there. But the three dresses. Now the dresses are, again, fairly simple, but I have, okay. I'm going to start marking off the things that are already complete. So I have one cotton shirt complete, so I can mark it off the top there. I have a linen skirt. I should probably make another one. But I have one dress, so I only need two dresses. I have one union suit. I have one corset cover and one cotton petticoat and I do have one corset and like I said I got all of the hosiery that I need. I just purchased that offline or online I should say but it's still the need for two dresses. Now I've taken off quite a bit of work from quarter one. 
I'm just going to put them both there because the amount of work that was taken off with the shirt and what's labeled as the chemise, which is a corset cover, and the union suit, that's going to be taken up by the two dresses and I should be okay. And that's just making a notation to myself to make sure that I don't forget about it later. <laughs> because I am very, very good at that. So, and this is why I need supplies. I do, I do, I do. All right, now I do wanna go ahead and put this in my planner and schedule it out a little bit better. And I just wanna use the back of the sheet that has all the information on it. So I'm just gonna pull that off. And then start writing it out. And I will just there was there was a quarterly and I wanted to check and see if the quarterly planner page had enough room on it. Is in important days of the month, done in quarters, and no. Womp womp. Definitely not in that room. So I am just going to use the back of this page. I'm going to go ahead and start with quarter one and on each line, I'm going to write down what the item is, and I'm going to put the check boxes next to it. And I'll go ahead and speed right on through this. Nobody wants to sit and write me anymore. Sit and watch me write anymore than they have to. My goodness, if I could talk.
right. That's what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna see, I know I've got washi tape. I know there were some stickers around here somewhere that have to do specifically with sewing. I'm gonna try to find those. I will be right back. Well, no log finding the stickers, but we do have the washi tape. Well, let me pull out some of the thin ones and we'll see what we've got. done at the end of each quarter. Even though this is a loose guideline and I'm probably going to be moving stuff around and doing things as I see fit or as I need things, uh, but it, it's a good guideline. It's a good place to start. It's a good jumping off point. And I can still mark things off as I get them done and we'll see if I can even get this done before the end of the year. It could happen. getting a little bit older. It's still sturdy, but it would be nice to refresh that. And then there is the outer coat, the dress coat, and the raincoat. Now, 
for those of you who may be interested, this is the book that I was talking about that I'm going to be using. It's Sewing and Garment Drafting by Margaret J. Blair. It was published, and I think this one was published in 1908. Uh, but she published a number of books. This one is actually available on archive.org. And it's got pretty much everything that you need to know to be able to create your own wardrobe and to do the garment drafting and everything else. Um, it has a list of supplies you'll need. It has a whole bunch of stuff. That's just a table of contents. Um, it has information on the different hand stitches, the different types of fabric, how to patch things, how to mend things, how to darn things, how to do buttonholes, how to... Uh, it shows how to do the measurements on a person, um, how to do different seams and hemming, and that's gathers right there. <laughs> it, it's a handy, handy book. It is available, as I said, on archive.org, which is a great resource. I love it. I get about half of everything from there. Um, here we go. Here's the taking measures, and it shows you exactly where the measurements should be taken and explains to you in the text as well. Um, and then this is, this is examples of what needs to be done with the instructions to do drafting. But it's a great book. If you're interested, go ahead and take a look. See if it might be something you may be interested in. If it's something I can help with. Um, what is that? Oh, okay. I remember. Uh, here we go. This is the union suit that I keep talking about. Or combination drawers. That's the drafting pattern for that. <laughs> um... But yes, uh, that's this is the book that I'm going to be taking everything from, or the vast majority of everything. I do have a couple of others, but this is the big one. Thank you all for coming in and joining me. I know this is not the standard floss tube fair, uh, but I am going to be doing this until at least the end of the year. I think once a month do an update on the wardrobe would be a good pace for this. If it's not, let me know if you want to see more or you want to see less or you just want me to hush so you can listen to the music and watch the videos. That's also fine. Let me know. Ask questions. I will absolutely answer. Thank you all again for coming in to join me. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to keep up with me on this journey, absolutely like and follow. Uh, say hello in the comments. Whatever you like, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll, uh, I'll let you go. Bye.